just thinking about time and causality again. So it seems to me that, um, and by causality, I'm talking about the simple cause and effect stuff, not the kind of Aristotelian final cause, all that kind of thing. I'm just talking about the cause and effect that you find in dominoes, you know, because that's always the standard image of causality, isn't it? And um, I guess determinism, well, that's not what I'm thinking of particularly. But you know, a stack of dominoes falls down one after the other and the falling of one domino causes the falling of the next in the line irrevocably, clearly and I think as I say that's our tends to be our model of what causality looks like but um, the stacks of dominoes or long stacks of dominoes at least don't really exist in real life do they? I mean I know there's those competitions where people do line up thousands of dominoes but they're very few and far between and even they go wrong quite often don't they? pigeons fly into the room or there's a breath of wind and the thing goes wrong and those which means that other kinds of causes are intervening into that process so even a you know a highly regulated and con artificially constructed process like a domino chain is very easily broken or rather it's very easily made complex by other lines of causation crossing over it and that seems to me to be the pattern in day-to-day -day life, you know, that causation isn't lines of dominoes, is it? It's It very, very rapidly escalates into a network of causation, or a, a Googleplex or something, I don't know what the word would be even, of causation, rather than a, as I say, a set of chains. Like, you know, here I am in this car, for example, and I'm pausing here on this, this to top of this road here, waiting to turn right, here we go. Um, and of course, all my actions I've got preceding preceding actions which we could identify as causes you know I'm overtaking this juicing truck here and um, to do that I had to turn my the steering wheel slightly clockwise and that was preceded by the cause which was to, I guess to do with activation patterns in my brain I suppose or um, movements in the muscles of my arms which preceded the, the movement itself but there was also other causes weren't there you know the the fact that I was turning turning slightly as I did the overtaking move meant there was a little bit of a centrifugal force on my body which made me lean to one side a little bit and you know and that meant that I put slightly different pressure on one side of the wheel than the other so the movement was affected by those kinds of things so they were part of the causal network and everything else you know the bumps in the road and uh, my breathing patterns, what I'm thinking about, the fact that I'm talking whilst I'm doing all this stuff. You know, all this stuff is, part, is forming part of that set of causes. And that's just like a couple of seconds whilst I'm driving, you know. And each of those causes, each of those things I've just mentioned, must have been preceded by other causes. You know, the neural activation patterns in my brain didn't just spring out of nowhere. They were preceded by a whole other set of neural patterns. In fact, really, really complex ones, you know, given how complex the brain is. You know, there was called tsunamis of other storms sweeping across that, doing their own causal, intercausal, is that a word? I don't know, causal kind of effect on all that stuff. And, um, you know, the centrifugal force on my body by the road was preceded by my speed leading up to that, by the... Uh, the surface of the road, the fact that it's slightly damp, so I'm driving slightly slower than usual. You know, all these things are... Um, and it just multiplies out of control really, really quickly. I mean, within milliseconds. So whilst this moment, the moment I'm in right now, is absolutely connected to the previous, but whatever previous means. I'm not sure if it makes any sense to talk about a single previous moment, but let's say it is. Of course, it's all connected up to the previous moment. Once you get past a few femtoseconds, probably, microseconds, you're into such a network of causation that pretty much everything else in the known universe involved, you know, it seems to me, somehow. It's a bit like that thing about going to tracking your ancestors, you know. I've got two ancestors, direct ancestors, my parents. And then I've got kind of four great-grandparents, four grandparents. I, you know, before, you, before you know it, you, you only have to go a few generations back and you connected to everybody that's ever existed, aren't you, really? It's a little bit like that, I think, with this causation. You're very, you don't have to go very far back. 
before the chains of causation involve perhaps not everything in the known universe, but a lot of stuff, yeah? And the same thing operates forward. You know, here I am driving on my way to Falmouth to go to work. And you know, all the time I'm causing things to happen, or some, or whatever this eye is, things seem to be being caused to happen on a very kind of proximal level. I'm just turning around here, just turning a corner here, so I'm moving the wheel accordingly in my, I'm causing you know, the, the car to, the wheels in the car to turn and that effectively causes certain things to happen. So yeah, I can, there's, there's causes happening there, but each of those very rapidly escalates, you know, because it, it, my, my turning the wheel doesn't just cause the car to turn, it causes some wear on the road surface, it causes noise in the air, it's causing um, fumes to gather in the air, it's causing all kinds of other things which have other kind of effects later on, you know, so just like when you're looking in the past, causation escalates very quickly out of any kind of sense of control or sense of uniqueness, any sense of it being a, a, a chain of dominoes. So the same thing is true forward. You know, I don't have to go very far in the, into the future before my actions just kind of dissipate. The causation, the causal chain of my actions kind of dissipates into a, a kind of mirage of, a, of possibilities, you know, completely overlapping everybody, other, everybody else's causal actions, just in the same way that if I go back in the time, my, the, the causes of my presence here now, my actions here now, as I go back in time, it, kind of, it seems to kind of fan out into the past. That causal network fans out to incorporate more and more lines of causation. So as I look forward to the future, the effects that I'm having kind of fans out to include more and more other beings and other, more and more other um, actions and phenomena in the world are affected by mine and overlap, as I say, with everybody else's actions that's taking place right now in the present and every other moment. You know what I mean? So this moment, this thing where this, this little bit of domino that I'm sitting in right now is being pushed by, you know, it's like the blunt end, that domino that's pushing on me right now. It's kind of the blunt end of a massive set of causative principles and actions incorporating the, pretty much the entire history of the world on some level. In fact, if you go back as far as the Big Bang, the entire world is pushing on my domino right now. And the push that I make as I lean forward into this car right now and drive it towards Falmouth that is also fanning out, overlapping with all the other little domino pushes that everybody and everything is making. To lead to I don't know what. So I don't know, I don't know what all that means really, but this is the idea that we're chains of dominoes, and look, it looks at chains of dominoes as models for causation. That doesn't work, does it? Doesn't work at all. And I think it's not just enough to say that it's complicated either, really. I know I'm saying that, but I don't think I can feel it whilst I'm saying it. That's not a good enough explanation. Because it's not just more, is it? Because more is different. More isn't just more. More is different. Roundabout. 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 It's funny, really, because the because um, that gap idea that I've just been trying to think into. That here we are. This. We feel this moment as a moment of causation, but it really quickly dissolves into a kind of causal fog in the past and the future. That is overlaid with, I think, what, what feels like a very different model of causation that my really simple and basic understanding of physics tells me. You know, because I assume that something like the Big Bang happened at some point in the past, let's call it the past, and at some point in the future, if um, if what people say now about dark energy and dark matter is true, then at some point in the remote future, the universe will expand and continue to expand to a point where there are the distance between atoms, distance between entities in that universe is so vast that there's no way one atom, one particle, one entity will be able to interact with another. So there'll be, at, at a certain point, there will be no possibility of causation because there'll be just such a vastness. There'll be no proximity to allow causation to take place within. So it seems to me that that journey from a Big Bang, which I don't understand, of course, but um, 
there must be a point where only one thing can happen, you know what I mean? It's just like there was a domino and then it just like immediately cascaded into billions of dominoes. But there must have been a point in the Big Bang where just one thing happened. You know what I mean? One thing kind of happened and that triggered two more and that, whatever, something like that. So at the one end of time, there's this um, singular thing happening. And at the other end of time, in the distant future, everything happens and it's happened. A causation ends there. I mean, so again, that's like a fan, but it's a fan in which the perimeter, the end of it, the far, far reaches of future time, that fan gets out so wide that causation just gets thinner and thinner and thicker. The fog of causation disperses, gets thinner and, and eventually just disappears like the mist in the morning.